Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 6. Uh, this is Light of the World Ministries in 1 John 8. I mean, I'm sorry. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 6, verse 1, King James Bible. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem, and blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and set up a sign of fire in Beth Hasarim, for evil appeareth out of the north, and great destruction. I've heard people tell me, oh, America was never founded as a Christian nation. Well, nations are not Christian. People in the nation can be Christians, but the nation isn't. And yes, there's wheat among the tares. And, you know, some of the founders of this nation that wanted to throw off the bankers of England were believers. A lot of them weren't. But I'll tell you what, when you look at the names in the Bible, you see a lot of places in the United States with names right from the Bible. Tekoa. Do you know that's a little town in Georgia, North Georgia? Tekoa. You know, so when I hear people say, oh, America was never founded as a Christian nation. Well, yeah, nation can't be Christian, but a people were. Let's face it, there was a time when America was the most richest nation in the world. There were times in history when America fed the world, when there was uh, problems in the other parts of the world. For example, in the early 70s, Bangladesh was hit with some kind of a, I think it was hit with a tsunami or something, and uh, Americans rallied and sent them aid. I think there was an earthquake in Guatemala. We put food together and sent it down there. You know, America's, there's been times America's fed the world. Really. Sadly, we've fed our enemies when we should have let them starve. Well, I should say the enemies of the Lord. The Lord's enemies are my enemies. And these people will say, oh, we're supposed to love everybody and we're supposed to love our enemies. Well, yeah, we're supposed to love our enemies. We're not supposed to love the Lord's enemies. You want to love Satan? You go for it. Verse 2, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her roundabout. They shall feed everyone in his place. Prepare ye war against her. Arise. Let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away. For the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, and let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. For thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew ye down trees, and cast a mount against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is, she is holy oppression in the midst of her. You know, that's funny that uh, the Lord told Benjamin, to leave Jerusalem. That's funny. Because guess what? Apostle Paul, guess what tribe he was of? Benjamin. Verse 7. As a fountain casteth out her waters, so she casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard and heard in her. Before me continually is grief and wounds. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee. 
lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall truly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a great gatherer into the baskets. You know what thoroughly gleaning the vine is? I mean, you picked, you picked every single piece of fruit. There ain't nothing left. The Lord is comparing the gleaning of a, a vine, like a grapevine, with what's going to be left of Jerusalem, which is like nothing. There is not going to be nothing left. Verse 10, To whom shall I speak and give warning, that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. These people have ears to hear, but they won't listen. And to them, a reproach is like, the word of the Lord is like a curse to them. They don't love the word of the Lord. They have no delight in it. Verse 11. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. Ooh. You ever seen people holding back their anger? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the age aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. In other words, complete and total judgment here. Verse 13. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. What is covetousness? Greed. They want not only everything that they have, they want everything that everybody else has too. Sort of reminds me of all these multi-billionaires. I can name a few. Microsoft, uh, Mobile Exxon, Amazon. Yeah, a few of those people. Yeah. Far from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Yeah, when you get a business dealing with them, they, they cheat you. 14. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. You know why people don't understand the Bible and the prophecy in the New Testament? It's because they don't read the Old Testament. What happened in the past will happen basically in the future. There might be different angles, but a lot of the stuff is ripped right out of the pages of the Old Testament. Look at the tribulation period of Revelation. It looks exactly like the plagues of Egypt with Moses and Pharaoh. I mean, it's a very a lot of parallels there there's some contrasting but a lot of parallels so here it is they're saying peace peace and there's no peace so let's take a look at first thessalonians chapter 5 paul writing to the church at thessalonica a city in greece verse 1 but of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need that i write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Uh, now, to the believers, 
it's not going to come as a thief in the night. It's going to come to the unbelievers as a thief in the night. Matthew 24, Jesus told us the signs that would precede his coming. We're not in darkness. We, we will know. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they, who's they? The unbelievers. For when they shall say, peace, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren, oh, okay, before we were talking about them, now we're talking about brethren in the faith. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Of course not, because we're going to know the signs. Because we've read the word and we believe the word. We know what the word says. The sun's going to be darkened and the moon's not going to give her life, light. And it's going to be turned into blood. It's going to look red. Things are going to happen. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch. What are we watching for? We're watching for the Lord and the signs. But let us watch and be sober. But if you listen to the pre-trib rapture crowd, they're like, oh, it's just going to happen. You know, it could happen any second. It's not what Jesus said. And then they'll tell you that the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two different events. What does that mean? Does that mean Jesus Christ is not Lord? Basically, that's what they're saying. Think about it. I mean, when you tell me that the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is not the same thing, it's a different event, isn't Jesus Christ Lord? I think he is. But who am I? I'm just some guy that's read the Bible a couple times. Jeremiah 6. And verse 14, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. That's right. The evil ones are going to be deceived. They're going to think peace, peace, or peace and safety. You know, the Lord doesn't really, he, he does think. He has a plan, and he follows the plan. And sorry, we're not talking about Q here. Verse 15. Were they ashamed? No, we're talking about Judah. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. What? Chaplain Bob, what are you talking about? Blush? People, I want you to think about it. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? What's an abomination? It's a sin that God really, really hates. I mean, their sin, and all sin is sin, but an abomination is something extra sickening. People that regularly perform abominations before the Lord, uh, they have an extra special hot place in hell. You want to know what some abominations are? Witchcraft. That's an abomination to the Lord. Um, so dumb. Replace the U with an O. And drop the uh, B at the end. Yeah. Uh, that's an abomination. That's rebellion. And the Bible says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And witches were to be put to death. But, you know, America just says, well, you know, we can't do that. That's the Old Testament. We don't want to, 
you know, we want to give them a chance to, to come to Jesus because Jesus loves them all. And that's why hundreds of thousands of children disappear every year in the United States alone. Yeah. I know where they're ending up. But nobody believes me. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Uh, what group of people can blush? Uh, when you can answer that question, you'll know who God's people are. Can Africans blush? Uh, no. No, they can't. You know, that one thing kills the black Hebrew thing. Think about it. What group of people printed the Bibles, translated the Bibles, printed the Bibles, built churches in honor of Jesus Christ, even though their doctrines are dishonoring in a lot of ways? You know, China, Japan, India? Brazil? No. No. Europe. I remember I was in elementary school and a little redhead girl I used to like. I always liked redhead girls. I don't know why. Mom always said, you're probably going to end up married to a redhead girl. But, because uh, I had two, two of them that I knew. But, oh well. But the thing is, somebody told a off-color joke, and she turned red. So, blushed. Only certain people can blush. Neither could they blush. Neither shall they fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. That's right. Ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. No, we don't want to walk the Lord's way. No, we're going to go where we want to go. I'm going to read that again. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you. Now what was a watchman? Well, in a fenced city, a watchman would hang out on the wall uh, looking with his binoculars over the horizon, trying to see if there was an army coming so that he could, you know, blow the trumpet and warn people and let them know, hey, the enemy's coming. We got to we got to get prepared, you know, get all the tr soldiers on the wall and get everybody grab your bow and arrow and, you know, get your swords sharp. Verse 17. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, well, there's watchmen on the wall, and then there's spiritual watchmen. And I'd like to think that I'm a spiritual watchman, but I don't know. Trying to warn the flock. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. No, we're not going to listen. We're not going to listen to you. What do you know? Therefore hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. Verse 19. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil. I will bring evil evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor 
to my law, but rejected it. You think Europe, uh, you know, UK or America is any different? No, we're no different. We don't want the Lord's words. We don't want the Lord's law. I mean, there was a time when America was pretty close to God's law. I can show you in the U.S. Constitution a lot of things that come right out of the Bible. Do you know that there were states that had in their state constitution that only a professing Christian could be elected to public office? What happened to that? Why They ignore those laws now. I mean, every uh, six-pointed um, you know, star child would be uh, ineligible for public office. They'd all be ineligible for public office. Rouse out. That ain't going to happen. No. Because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. Ooh. You know, when you're on a path and there's rocks, and people trip over the rocks, and they fall down and crack their skull. That's a stumbling block. The cross was a stumbling block to the Jews. Yeah. Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. They're going to fall upon the stumbling blocks. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Oof. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people coming cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. Anguish hath taken hold of us and pain as of a woman in travail. Uh, guys, ask a woman what it's like giving birth, especially the first one. I've heard women say the second and third is not nearly as bad as the first. Verse 25. Go not forth into the field, go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth, and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning. No, we're not talking about morning, evening, afternoon. No. Mourning as in being sick with sorrow for death. Make thee mourning. As for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, that thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanderers. They are brass and iron they are all corruptors. They are brass and iron. You know, the first time brass and iron is mentioned is talking about the sons of Cain, who were workers with brass and iron. The uh, What some call the law of first mention. The bellows are burned. What was a bellow? Uh, it's, it's like a, it's like an, it's an air pump. 
I'm not a fan. It's like an air, it's an air pump. It's like an accordion. They open it up, it fills up, they squeeze it together, and a whoosh of air goes into the um, where they're melting a, a metal. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed of the fire. The founder melteth in vain. For the wicked are not plucked away. Reprobate silver shall men call them, because the Lord hath rejected them. Boy, I could make a whole study on silver. God is likened unto gold. But Israel is likened unto silver. All right, let's go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek. Now, who was the messenger? John the Baptist was the messenger sent before the Lord. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Uh, what did, where did Christ go to the temple? Even the messenger, even the messenger of the covenant. The covenant. What covenant? Turn to Jeremiah 31, 31. Now remember, in Jeremiah 3, 8, God said he divorced Israel. Divorced them. Gave them a bill of divorce. Says, get out of here. Get out of my house. I'm sick and tired of looking at you. You dirty, filthy wench. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. New covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not a renewed covenant. If it was a renewed covenant, well, guess what? Then when you need a temple and you need to start doing sacrifices, quit listening to the Hebrew roots garbage. Oh, it's, it's not a new covenant. It's a renewed covenant. You know, it didn't work the first time, but we're going to try it again. We'll, we'll try it again until we get it right. No. I'm sorry. The blood of Jesus for me. And if you want to do animal sacrifices for you, you go for it. Yeah, really. Back to Malachi. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. What covenant? The new covenant. Christ. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? Well, there's two comings. First he came as a lamb, next time as a lion. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. Uh, what do you, what's a refiner's fire? You ever heard of a, re, of a refinery? They take iron and melt it. You know, that's a refinery. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Huh. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. What do you do with silver? You melt it down. And then, silver is heavier than usually all the other stuff. So the other stuff's going to float on top when it's melted. And that's what you do. You 
scrape the impurities off the top and you do that a few times and then guess what you've got 99.99 percent .99 pure silver well that's when man makes silver or purifies and refines silver when god gets done with you it's a hundred percent and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Well, guess what? The people of the Lord are likened unto silver. And somebody once asked, uh, they went, they called or went to and talked to a silver per, a person that uh, made, you know, silver, purified silver. I don't know if it was jewelry or coins or whatever. But they asked him, how do you know when silver is uh, purified and ready? He says, oh, that's simple. You take a look at it. And when you can see your face in it like a mirror, you know the silver is ready. Well, guess what? God's going to sit like a refiner and purifier of silver. When he can look at us and he sees his reflection in us, we're ready. The bride will be ready. The bride is not ready. The bride is not ready. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you in judgment and I will be a swift witness against the saucers. What's a saucer? a male witch, and against the adulterers, and against false swears, and against those that oppress the hiring hireling in his wages. Oh yeah, you hire a guy and you promise him to pay him and you don't. The widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear me not, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. You ever hear that thing, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever? For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Except from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Now remember something. The tithe was supposed to be a tenth of the increase, and the tithe was to be paid to the Levite priests. So unless Benny Hinn and Joel Osteen and Kenneth Copeland and the rest of them can prove that they're Levitical priests from the tribe of Levi of, the tri of, of Israel. It's not a tithe. You can send them an offering if you want, if you're foolish enough. But it's not a tithe. The tithe was only for the tribe of Levi because they were not given any land. And the other 11 tribes were supposed to support the tribe of Levi. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Oh, and by the way, that was supposed to be the increase. Okay? Not 10% of everything you have. 10% of what you had that year. Boy, they lie, don't they? Verse 9. Ye are cursed with a curse. 
for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now where herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Oh yeah, God will open the windows of heaven, the rain, right? And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. What's the devourer? The locusts, the, the worms. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. And I, the Lord, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. You know what happens when your uh, unripe fruit tree gets hit by a bad wind? All the fruit falls to the ground, you got nothing. Nothing to eat. Verse 12. For all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said it is vain, worthless. It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Oh yeah, they're delivered for a while. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Oh, yeah. What about stumbling block? We read about a stumbling block. The Lord said something about a stumbling block. Well, I don't want to make a big st study out of it, but Ezekiel 14, 3 and verse 4 also. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. See, these people came to Ezekiel to talk to him. But they have sin in their lives. Idols in their heart. Matter of fact, we should just, what do you think? Start from the beginning. Ezekiel 14, verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? These people have gross sin in their lives, and they think they're going to come here and talk to me? Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. You ever heard of a husband and wife that are estranged from each other? They're separated. There's nothing there anymore, hardly. Well, these people are estranged before the Lord because of their idols. Verse 6, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent! Repent! Jesus said repent. John the Baptist said repent. Peter said repent. Paul said repent. Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, 
and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me. See, they're the ones separating themselves and setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to him prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man and I will make him a sign and a proverb. Listen to this. And I will cut him off and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 9, listen to this. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity, the punished men of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. That the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. Boy, that's some harsh words, huh? Oof. Wow. What did Paul say? 1 Corinthians 1 23. But if we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. See, the cross to the Jews is a stumbling block. But the Greeks thought it was foolishness because the Greeks were always looking after wisdom. Oh, yeah. Let's go back. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness, the foolishness of preaching, the foolishness of preaching. Did you know preaching's foolishness? Well, to the non-believers it is. It pleased God by the foolishness of pre preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And I hope you enjoyed Jeremiah chapter 6, Chaplain Bob Walker here. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.